In lecture 11, we continue the idea of bonding types by applying the idea of bond polarity. In the previous lecture, we sorted bonds into three different types, ionic, covalent, and polar covalent bonds. Ionic bonds have a delta chi of greater than or equal to 1.8. There is a large electronegativity difference between the elements. Purely covalent bonds have delta chi less than or equal to 0.4, and there is very little electronegativity difference between the elements. Polar covalent bonds have delta chi between 0.4 and 1.8, and there is a medium amount of electronegativity difference for the elements in the compound, and the bond that is produced has a vector and is polar. Molecular compounds are those that have polar covalent and covalent bonds. Of course, bonding types come in a continuum, and the sorting boxes are just an easy way to refer to them. Here in this chart, we have percent ionic character on the y-axis and the electronegativity difference on the x-axis. And you notice that as electronegativity difference increases, we get more ionic compounds. And that is what we would predict if we made a compound of potassium with bromine or rubidium with fluorine. On the other hand, mostly covalent compounds are composed mostly of nonmetals. And that is what we would predict if we made a compound of carbon and oxygen or silicon and chlorine. But there are some outliers. You may notice that silver chloride is under the mostly covalent area of the curve. And we would predict that this would be an ionic compound, since silver is a metal and chlorine is a nonmetal. To explain this, we need to look further into electronegativity trends. Here is a chart from electronegativitychart.com. The values aren't quite the same as the one in our textbook, so please use our textbook values for calculating bond polarity. But what I like about this chart is that it has some general groupings for electronegativities. You notice that low electronegativity materials are here on the left and are mostly metals. But there are some metals that have higher electronegativity, especially as we move toward the right of the periodic table. There's even a group of metals that have very high electronegativity and levels comparable to those of nonmetals. Hydrogen, you notice, is very similar to nonmetals like carbon and phosphorus. And then there are some, of course, high electronegativity nonmetals. What you notice about silver is that it's one of those metals with a higher electronegativity. So when silver is in a compound with chlorine, the electronegativity difference is low. So this turns out to be more of a polar covalent compound than an ionic compound. And that's true of many of the metals, such as copper or mercury. Now, in general, one can just look at the periodic table and go by distance to determine electronegativity difference. The further apart things are in the periodic table, the greater their electronegativity difference. So if you were asked to rank magnesium fluoride, boron fluoride, and potassium fluoride from most polar to least polar, well, potassium and fluorine are furthest apart on the periodic table. And if we calculate their delta chi, they are the most polar combination. Magnesium and fluorine are the next closest, and they are in the middle. Boron and fluorine would be the least polar, both by estimated distance on the periodic table and by calculating their delta chi. This example would be very hard to rank from least polar to most polar because it involves hydrogen. Hydrogen has an electronegativity near nonmetals, but if you looked at the position of these atoms on the periodic table, I think you'd find it hard to spot a trend. So for this one, we're going to actually need to do the math. <laughs> 
So I've looked up the electronegativities using the values from our Wurtz book, and I'll add them for you underneath the elements. So here are your electronegativity values underneath each atom. Please take the difference and rank. And please look at the absolute value, which means turn all negative values to positives, and then rank them. Here's a question that can be answered by simply looking at periodic trends and knowing something about electronegativity. So please pull out your periodic tables. You might have a little difficulty with the carbon-chlorine combination unless you remember that chlorine is the third most electronegative atom on the periodic table. 